Palpatine became Supreme Chancellor, his bodyguards were Blue Robe members of the Senate Guard and the elite Senate Commandos. During the Clone Wars, Palpatine introduced his own security guards, the mysterious Red Guard. They reported directly to the Supreme Chancellor and had no oversight from the Senate. Citing security reasons, not to mention the fact that the Senate Guard were hugely overstretched protecting all the Senators in the troubled times, Palpatine's move went unchallenged. The anonymous, unspeaking Red Guard, meanwhile, went everywhere with the Chancellor. There were few known facts about the Red Guard, apart from their obvious devotion to duty and the Chancellor. Some whispered that there were little more than murderers and executioners in the service of the Chancellor. None knew the exact number of the members of the Guard, as they were never seen without their helmets. Estimates ranged from 50 to many thousand. The truth of the matter was that candidates for the Guard were handpicked from the best, most loyal soldiers and underwent an incredibly demanding training program. A successful graduate was given a uniform that, while it stressed the ceremonial role, offered surprising freedom of movement. Their red robes covered smooth armour that fully protected them, as did the full face red helmet. The uniform was topped off with combat gloves and boots lined with synthetic fur. Swathed in scarlet robes from head to foot, their faces hidden by smooth masks, the Royal Guard accompanied Emperor Palpatine everywhere, even unto death. The Royal Guard were the ultimate product of all the training, mental conditioning and skill that the Empire could instil in a man. Their aim, the main reason for their existence, was to protect the Emperor's life. Beneath those scarlet robes, they wore scarlet armour over a standard issue imperial black body glove. Beneath that featureless scarlet mask, with its electro-optic scanners, lay a brain that had been carefully stripped of every feeling apart from fanatical devotion. Potential members of the Royal Guard were carefully selected from the most elite troops the Empire possessed. Once chosen, they were segregated from their former companions. Their identities, their families and friendships, everything they once had, were lost to them. Now they serve the Emperor, and the Emperor alone. Having been selected, the trainees were shipped to the barren planet of Yinkor, far from the known galactic spaceways. The planet's original inhabitants, a race of timid reptiles had been completely eradicated in order that nobody else in the galaxy would know what secrets it now held. There the trainees were instructed by their mentor, Master Kaneed, in the dark arts of combat. They mastered every conceivable weapon, including their weapon of choice, the Vibra Active Force Pike, and every known means of hand-to-hand -hand combat, not the least of which was the terrifying fast martial art of Ikani. They fought each other in the suspended arena known as the Squall, and for the Emperor's pleasure during his occasional visits, selected trainees fought to the death against his chosen champion, Darth Vader. The trainee Royal Guard members were paired up during their time on Yinkor. Closer than brothers, the pairs worked together, lived together and supported each other. They were inseparable until their final rite of passage, the ceremony that cemented their dedication to the Emperor when, in the Emperor's presence, each pair fought until one of them was left alive. Having thus stripped the last vestiges of friendship and dependency from their characters, they were fit to serve their master. Standing out in their unique appearance, they were the finest trained, non-force sensitive soldiers. They were also taught a secret language to use amongst each other during battle as a means to keep their tactics a secret from the enemy. Along with guarding, they were used for assassination and spying missions. The Royal Guard also guarded Darth Vader on Mustafa, his castle, while Darth Vader was healing in his Bathta tank, where he was vulnerable to attack. It was also rumoured that they were also there to spy on Darth Vader, as they were completely loyal to the Emperor. Trust and loyalty was a way of life to them, as they knew that the Emperor was a Sith Lord. The Royal Guard served with distinction, protecting the Emperor and deflecting the many attempts on his life by the Rebel Alliance by paid assassins and even by his own aides and advisers. During the ascendancy of the rebels, following the destruction of the second Death Star, the remaining members of the Royal Guard, those who had not died with their Emperor, retreated to Yinkor. After the death of Emperor Palpatine was confirmed, a huge portion of the Royal Guards committed suicide as they felt they had failed in protecting him. 
Those who didn't commit suicide joined imperial warlords or sought to avenge the death of the emperor. It was rumoured that the emperor allowed the training of a select few of the royal guard to be trained in lightsaber combat by Darth Vader himself, but not to a high standard as the emperor and Darth Vader. This was done believing that not all Jedi were killed after Order 66 and that some may try to attack the Emperor, as Darth Vader wasn't always with the Emperor to protect him. Unquestioningly obeying the orders of their master, the Royal Guard were not present when Palpatine met his ultimate fate aboard the second Death Star. The Emperor's plan had been to lure Luke Skywalker to the dark side of the Force, turning him into his new apprentice. Not wanting his guard to interfere, he ordered them to leave, sealing his doom.